It's no secret that redstone forms a crucial part of Minecraft. This little red dust can power everything from simple circuits to more complex contraptions capable of devouring entire worlds. Redstone contraptions are a crucial part to the mid to late game and it even spawned its own community dedicated to using it to its fullest potential. But how can we use so few blocks to express such complex systems and why do so many of these were these weird redstone designs work without visible redstone wires? To answer these questions, we're going to go on a little journey through logic and understand the languages we use to express logical arguments. Then we'll be taking a look at how Minecraft expresses logic and also some of the different languages that are in Minecraft. Before we begin, however, I just want to mention that this video was inspired in part by Roy Cook's talk on the expressive completeness of Minecraft on the Literature and Supergroup YouTube channel. It is a pretty cool video that covers a slightly similar concept, but mainly focused on expressing 16-bit logic in Minecraft. It's a, it's a pretty fun talk, and he also shows off a cool encoder, decoder, as well as other multi-bit logic gates. I think that's pretty cool because you usually only see people talk about regular binary logic gates. So to give credit where credit is due, I definitely recommend looking at this talk if you're interested and want to learn a bit more about 16-bit logic in Minecraft. I will be covering a bit in this as well, but not in as much detail. Anyways, on to the video. So, let's begin with sentences. There are various sentences we can form. These include, but are not limited to, commands, questions, and statements. Now, statements are interesting because there is something about them that's a bit different from the other two. Right? They convey information. There is something objective about them and the that has to do with this intuitive notion of sort of overall truthfulness. Like take for example the following statement. Now as bold as this claim is, it is stating something about the world. Either everyone who's watching this video will subscribe or they will not. There's this vague notion that what this sentence is describing is, you know, actually real or not. These sentences have some associated truthfulness built into into them. This is opposed to questions that simply request information or make you ponder, and commands which don't really have a notion of true or false, but more so a notion of doing. It, the truthfulness is called a truth value, and we measure it in terms of true and false. For every statement we make, it will either be true or it will be false. A statement that may be both true and false is called contingent, but we don't. In English, we can make many statements. However, there are also ways you can combine statements to make larger, more complex statements. Take the statement, the sky is blue and the grass is green. Here we combine two statements with an and to make one new statement. Take the next example. If it is raining, then I will put on my jacket. Here we combine two statements to form some sort of relationship. As you might notice, a lot of the way we combine statements has a similar pattern and there isn't anything particularly special about the sentences we chose either. There is some sort of internal structure we would and could try to represent. However, for more complicated statements, it's going to get very messy to write out and keep track of everything. So the question remains about how we can go about expecting these sorts of sentences in a way that allows us to reason about them without losing the actual logic behind them. This is where formal logic comes. And it is a tool used for symbolizing logical arguments. And we can form a natural deductive system for proving the validity of arguments. This video won't be a full course in formal logic and proof theory, and so I will only walk through the information relevant to this video and redstone. So keep in mind that the field gets pretty complex, and I am only scratching the fundamentals. In particular, we will be mainly be talking about truth functional logic, but there are also various other logics, including first order logic, higher order logics, and even various modal logic. So formal logic seeks to symbolize statements and different ways you combine them. The statements themselves are labeled as variables with capital letters. Usually the letter will be subject of the statement or some property. Next we have what are called logical connectives. These are little ands, ors, ifs, thens. We use to combine into more complex statements. We have the logical conjunction, disjunction, material implication, sometimes called conditional, material equivalence, biconditional, and negation. There are also two symbols for true and false. 
We also use brackets to make things readable and to help with context. The negation is the easiest, and it basically flips the truth value of our statement. It's like saying it is not the case that. If the statement in question is false, it becomes true, and if it is true, it becomes false. We will use the truth value to keep track of these. The logical conjunction is basically like and. Two statements combine with a conjunction form a new statement that is true if and only if the two statements are also both true. If at least one of them is false, then the larger statement is false. The logical disjunction is basically an R statement. If at least one of the statements is true, then the disjunction is true. If they're both false, it's false. So it's kind of like an either or scenario. You can have, you can have both. A conditional statement is given by an arrow pointing from one statement to another. The left is called the antecedent and the right side is called the consequent. A conditional statement is true if the left side is true and right side is also true. However, there are some logical edge cases we need to remember. Let's look at a statement if pigs can fly and it will rain cats and dogs. This statement is true. Now, Here's where I kind of go off to the side and mention that true or false in this context doesn't mean it is actually happening. Uh, true or false is simply in terms of the relationship. If pigs could fly, then it would rain cats and dogs. But since pigs aren't flying, then it's not raining cats and dogs. This is a true statement, even if it sounds like nonsense. If I conditional is like a conditional, except we can reverse the symbols. This is basically saying if A then B and if B then A. A by conditional is also called an if and only if statement, as it is true if only if both sides have the same truth value. This means that if both values are false, then the by conditional still holds for a similar kind of reasons uh, as the condition. So let's symbolize the following sentence. I will not play video games and eat pizza if and only if it is not raining. Alright, so it's time to dive into Minecraft and look at how we could represent logic. Since a single redstone signal is either on or off, we could look at these as being either a true state or a false state. If for some reason we could find a way to represent all of our main connectors in Minecraft, then we could express arbitrary logic in Minecraft. So, for anyone who knows a bit about circuits, and maybe has done some redstone, you'll probably be familiar with logic gates. Logic gates are essentially logical connectors for binary circuits, state speed being either 0 or 1, high or low, true or false. The simplest logic gate is a NOT gate. This is our logical negation, and it simply flips our signal. We can build this easily with a block and a redstone torch. Next on the list is NOR gate. We can build an OR gate by just connecting two redstone lines. If you notice, it functions just like the truth table for our disjunction. So, how would we build an AND gate? I'll let you think about that for a bit, and before we continue on to how we will build it, I want to talk a bit about logical equivalence. In language, there are many ways to express the same thing. For example, I want an apple and a banana. It's the same as saying, it is not the case that I don't want an apple nor a banana. They're the same, uh, so they have the same sort of substance, but they're two completely different ways to express it. This equivalence relation in particular is called the Morgan's Rule after Augustus de Morgan. It allows us to turn a conjunction into some negations and disjunctions. It also works in reverse, so we can turn a disjunction into a conjunction and negation. With that out of the way, we can now think about how we can build our AND gate, and all we, need to, all we need is to take two negations, or them, and then negate the output, which looks something like this. Now another operation I didn't talk about is called XOR, or exclusive OR. An exclusive OR is a logical connector that is true if and only if exactly one of the inputs is off, and it's false if both are false or both are true. If you look at the truth table, you'll find it's almost negation of the by condition. So let's try building XOR in redstone. It would help if we could express it in terms of something we already have, which is ands, nots, and ors. If we have A, X, or B, then we can describe it as having A or B and not A and B. So perfect, let's build that. If 
if you notice, this is a bit conky, so let's think of how we can simplify this expression. So let's introduce some new symbols. The first one is called the Schecker stroke, also known as snand. This basically means not and. And the next symbol is called the pure zero or amphac. This is basically not or, also known as nor. Here's a Minecraft norm gate. You can see it operates like the truth table. And if we move over here, we notice we have an AND gate, and it works just as we'd expect. We can now take both of these and construct XOR in terms of NAND and NORS. Now we're only really missing one more connective, and that's the material implication. Now let's deconstruct this a little bit to think about what the material implication actually implies. If A leads to B, then we know it is impossible to have A and not B at the same time. So if you write that out and apply to Morgan's, we get a nice little expression with a disjunction. And so here it is, pretty simple. Now if we go back for a second, notice that we were able to construct all of these logic gates in terms of other smaller logic gates, right? In fact, there are many different ways we could have gone through and written all of these out, right? We could have completely ignored all these other logical connectives and only used a small subset to express any logical statement we wanted, really. The set of symbols we can use to express any truth table is called a functionally complete set, and the symbols are said to be jointly functionally complete. These symbols form the language we use to express our logic. If the symbols form a logically complete set, then we have a functionally complete language. A, a very simple example of a functionally complete set is the negation and disjunction. This is why we were able to build all of those logical gates, because we could build a NOT gate and a NOR gate, and then using those two gates, we could build the rest. Another interesting uh, fact is that both NAND and NOR are known as individually functionally complete sets, which means that we can express an entire logical language using just NAND or just NOR. To prove this, we only need to show that we can form negation and disjunction using NAND or NOR. When you put this back into the perspective of Minecraft, we have a sort of different language. Rather than symbols, we have blocks. In this case, using torches and redstone dust, we could form a NOT gate and a NOR gate. Thus, redstone, dust, and torches form their own functionally complete set. However, is it the only functionally complete set in Minecraft? To test that these are, are there are more functionally complete block languages in Minecraft, we simply need to show that we can form a not, an and, or, or an and using some set of blocks. Let's look at this piston redstone block design. By connecting the redstone block to an output and having the piston push it out of the way or it's use a signal, we've effectively formed a not gate. If we play around a bit more, we can form a simple OR gate, too. Thus, we have found another functionally complete block language, comprised entirely of pistons and redstone blocks. No dust is required. So here I have built the remaining logic gates using this specific block language. Here's another cool trick. By using a detector, we can form a NOT gate using only a minecart. Do this by taking advantage of the fact that a redstone signal will cause a bent rail to switch its direction. The signal is on, my cart travels in a loop where it doesn't power anything. When the signal is off, the minecart returns and triggers the detector rail, which lights a signal. I wasn't able to form an OR gate, but I did make this AND gate using a similar approach to the NOT gate. Here, we essentially have each signal move the detector up a loop. Then both signals are on, uh, then the minecart will enter the final loop or trigger the detector rail. This design could actually be scaled for multiple conjunctions as well. Another thing we can do is combine languages. Here is an XOR gate using only pistons and minecarts. We can even make some other more interesting Minecraft headstone hacks to make some more interesting gates. Here's another not and or. Another thing I alluded to earlier was Minecraft's ability to do multi-bit logic. This is done pretty easily with the use of a comparator. As a redstone signal travels forwards, it loses one power until it moves 15 blocks and dies. 
A comparator can save that signal and send it back. You can also perform subtractions and comparisons, hence the name. Um, again, the video I mentioned earlier goes into much better detail, so if you're really curious about how to build multi-bit logic gates using comparators, go check that out. So, to recap, we started thinking about statements. Then we found a way to formalize logical arguments using symbols. Uh, we then found a way to express the same logic using Minecraft apps Redstone. We also took some time and explored other functionally complete language sets in Minecraft. Uh, with that all said and done, I kind of want to wrap up by challenging the viewer to go and find their own cool functionally complete set of locks. I'm curious to see what you all come up with. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, um, please make sure to like and subscribe. I hope to be able to make more content, but I'm going to be going on vacation in a few weeks and I start another year of university soon, so we'll see how much I can get done. But my goals for this channel are essentially trying to revive some of the old game theory videos back when this content was more focused on using science to solve video game problems. I really enjoyed those videos growing up and figured it's about time to try my hand at it. I'll also be making some math and science memes time to time as well to keep the uploads consistent. Hoping to be making some tutorials and subjects like linear algebra and calculus, as well as more advanced mathematics in the future as well. I've got a lot planned, but we'll see how much time I have. Thank you all for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.